Hey there, welcome back to How to Medicate and welcome to this new video on the best methods of contraception or birth control. For those of you who are meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you, my viewer, because I believe that medically educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this channel. This video also comes with a quick disclaimer. It's meant purely informative. This is not medical advice. And if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. And now quickly, let's get learning. There are several contraceptive methods available, each with their own benefits or drawbacks. The type that suits you best depends on personal circumstances and your health. And after watching this video, you could contact your doctor or general practitioner and discuss the options you liked. Now for this video, I found a medical study, which I will be referring to. This study worked out the effectiveness of each contraceptive method by calculating how many women get pregnant if 100 women would use this method for a year. Which brings us to the first contraceptive method, the condom. And there are two types of condoms, an internal one, which is placed inside of the vagina, and an external one, which is placed around the penis. Condoms are made by very thin latex, plastic, or rubbers, with the purpose of preventing semen to come into contact with the genitals of your sexual partner. And the usage of condoms has several benefits. First of all, you only need to use it when you are having sex, although please use a new one every time. It will also prevent you from several STIs, and it is effective in 95-98% to 98 of all cases. Meaning that if 100 women would use a condom correctly for a whole year, only 2-5 to five of them would get pregnant. Unfortunately, condoms also have some disadvantages. Some people find that condoms interrupt their sex. If you do not use them properly, they can tear. And some people are allergic to the material of a condom. Next up are oral contraceptive pills. These are also called the pill and they contain artificial female hormones like estrogen and progesterone. And there are a few different versions of this pill, a combined pill and a progesterone only pill. These pills prevent pregnancy with several effects. First of all, preventing the ovaries from releasing an egg each month, called the ovulation, and or they make it harder for sperm to penetrate the womb itself. When using this pill, you need to take a tablet once a day at a fixed time for 21 days, after which sometimes follows a gap week. Other types will need to be taken continuously without a break. Benefits of these pills is that they can be very, very effective more than 99% of all cases, and they can also decrease painful menstruations. Downsides are that you need to take a pill at a fixed time every day, and if you don't, if you miss a pill, if you vomit, or if you have severe diarrhea, then this may decrease its effectivity. Therefore, typical use of the pill lowers its effectivity to 92%. In addition, usage of this pill might cause several side effects like a headache, nausea, and it also increases your risk for cervical cancer. And lastly, it does not protect you from STIs. Which brings us to the next contraceptive method, contraceptive injections. These contain the hormone progesterone. So just as the contraceptive pills we just discussed, they prevent an ovulation and they make it harder for sperm to penetrate your womb. Depending on the brand you're using, you need an injection every 8 to 13 weeks in your upper arm, tights or buttocks. Benefits of these injections are that they are 99% effective, may last up to 13 weeks and they may reduce heavy periods. Disadvantages are that they are injections, they may change your period, they do not protect you against STIs, they may cause side effects and after quitting they can delay the return of your normal periods and therefore they may delay you to become pregnant if you want to. This can take upwards of a year. Then contraceptive implants. They also contain the hormone progesterone and therefore they work the same as the injections and the contraceptive pill. The implant steadily releases this hormone into your bloodstream and thereby protects you from becoming pregnant. It stays effective for up to three years. The usage of an implant has several benefits. It may be effective for up to three years, it's 99% effective, and as soon as you remove the implant, your fertility returns to normal. Disadvantages are that this implant needs to be placed and removed with minor surgery. It might cause side effects, your periods might stop when using it, and it does not protect you from STIs. Next up are the intrauterine device and the intrauterine system. 
pot or small T-shaped devices which are placed into your uterus. The intrauterine device is made by copper. It's placed into your womb and there it releases its copper, thereby killing sperm and preventing a fertilized egg from being able to implant itself into the womb. These can be effective for 5 to 10 years. An intrauterine system, on the other hand, releases the hormone progestogen, lasting for 3 to 5 years, depending on the brand. Advantages of these devices are that they're very effective, up to 99%, and they stay active for many, many years. Your fertility will return to normal as soon as this device is removed. When using an intrauterine system, it may also reduce heavy periods. And a special benefit of using an intrauterine device is that it does not have any hormonal side effects. Disadvantages may be that your periods stop completely. When using an intrauterine device, this may increase your periods for several months. When using an intrauterine system, this may cause several side effects and both do not protect you from STIs. And lastly, we will discuss sterilization, the only permanent form of contraception. This can both be done in men and women. In females, sterilization is done by a surgeon who will block your fallopian tubes. Normally, these link your ovaries to the womb. When blocked, this means a woman's egg cannot meet the sperm, so fertilization cannot happen. In male sterilization, also called a vasectomy, a surgeon cuts the tube that would normally carry the sperm out of the testicles. Benefits are that they are both very, very effective, more than 99% of all cases, and are both permanent. Drawbacks are that they both require surgery, they're very hard to reverse, and they do not protect you from STIs, and there is a risk for complications of the surgery. Now, I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you know now which contraceptive suits you best. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And for those of you who want to keep learning, check out the playlist in the description or up there. Before you go, I want to quickly thank my sponsors on Patreon. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an Investor T supporter. And thank all of you for watching this video. And if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. This will help out the channel tremendously. And consider subscribing. I'm striving to my next goal, 15,000 subscribers, and you could help me. Please subscribe. And as always, I will see you next week with a new video. Bye-bye.